Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the JRPG Report. This is going to be episode 93. I'm your host, James Fisher. Thank you so much for tuning in this week and every week to your weekly JRPG podcast. Uh, We don't have a lot of stuff to talk about this week. It was a little slow, so this may be a little on the short side. Um, But let's get into it. Just one quick note. Um, I have not had a chance to record or do the drawing for the listener support contest just yet. But uh, I'm hoping to do that over the weekend. I'll post a video to the Facebook uh, page. And uh, we'll officially announce it it on next week's podcast. But I just want to give you guys a little heads up. Things have been a bit hectic here. Just not had a chance to... uh, sit down and do that yet but so the first thing i want to talk about this week is uh we got a glimpse into persona 5 scramble the phantom strikers there was a this was the second trailer to be released for the game and it it shows a lot of things um both uh story wise and gameplay wise um it kind of just puts a little more flesh out into all the details and so i invite you guys to check out the link i've got on the facebook page and you can check out that video i think it's about three minutes 42 seconds something like that and so also we're gonna be talking about this i think next week as well because they announced it plans to release new information about the game each day starting today that's january 9th through the 12th and so i guess (laughs) just the uh, nature of when the podcast comes out each week on thursdays usually just not a chance to really wait and talk too much more but we had enough to make a podcast that's so okay um in the trailer in particular there is definitely one scene and it's going to probably get a lot of attention because it definitely shows a character that looks like Joker, but it's, things are a little different. Um, it, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. So even I'm looking at the image even right now, and he's kind of got evil-looking eyes, and he's, his hair is uh, bright red, and his skin is dark it almost looks like maybe a i don't know i don't want to say a shadow version of him so my initial thought is this is a bad guy like a doppelganger version of joker that you'll have to face at some point i don't think this is him turned into somebody else or you know corrupted or something like that but so that's going to get a lot of attention of uh, who is this character what's going on um, I, we may get a little more um, details in the next couple of days. Um, the thing I want to talk about perhaps the most is there uh, shows playing the gameplay. The gameplay that I've seen where you are fighting individually, I think is fantastic looking. Um, there's some action sequences, you know, jumping from point to point just by pressing, I think, circle. That all looks good. There was a section where you're on a Makoto's motorcycle, kind of just driving down the street, and that looked a little clunky. Um, I imagine when you use it actually in battle scenarios, it it looks better, but this was like, I guess, traversing a bit, and I didn't love what I saw there. Um, Maybe it just was an unfortunate sequence. But other than that, it looks good. It's not... I would mentioned before it kind of looks on the same par as Persona graphically wise. It's just a touch below it. Um, and that's probably more of just the, the nature of the game. There's no way that they could have kept that high fidelity of graphic and doing an action game. But it still looks really, really good. Um, i trying to think of what else. There was a bunch more details uh, in the video, but I'll let you guys kind of check it out and let me know what you think. And maybe we'll talk a little bit more solid details when we have those next week. Um, again, if you remember, this game is coming out for PS4 and Switch in Japan on February 20th. 
So I I speculate we'll be getting it in May or June. Um, there is a lot of story, it looks like, in this game. I don't think it's on the same level as a full-blown Persona title, but it does look like it is going to continue the story uh, set after Royal. I think that's how we're officially saying this, although it doesn't have the new character in it. So we'll have to see exactly what, but it's definitely set after the events of Persona 5. And uh, looking forward to this game and would really love to see a Western release date at some point in time. There was a new uh, character spotlight trailer for Trials of Mana. This one highlights Charlotte and Kevin. We've talked about these characters uh, before. This is the second in a series of three trailers spotlighting the main characters. The previous one um, was uh, not too long ago. And so we already know about the the characters. Let's see what's um let's see. Although they're both very different characters from very different worlds, Kevin and Charlotte are linked by the common enemy, the sinister Gorman. Gor Gormond, I think that's how it says it. The evil jester takes away friends from both heroes and uses influence on Kevin's father to instigate an invasion of Wendell. His malicious actions propel the heroes to into a truly epic adventure. Unless it doesn't, of course. One of the coolest features of Trials of Mana is that it lets you choose three characters from the choice of six to play as, and the story will play out differently depending on your picks. I, I think that's one of the more intriguing uh, aspects of this game, and obviously will lead to some high replayability. To uh, depending on your choices and who you even choose to play with, um, will lead to very different outcomes it it's a bit of a a stretch and oh gosh i'm i'm searching for the for the name of the game i've completely lost it oh yeah for super nintendo did you guys ever play the seventh saga i believe epic and in or enix uh made that one back in the day and um It wasn't the best game ever, but I really got into that one. And I believe there were seven characters to choose from with that game. And obviously the game would be very different depending on which main character you chose. But then you always, you could recruit one of the other main characters as your, uh, as your ally. And based on who you picked and who you allied with completely changed who the main enemies were going to be. And some of the other uh, main characters would be friendly to you. Some of them would um, not be so much. Um, The game revolved around getting uh, epic runes. I believe that's what it was. And like some of them would be fine with you. Some of them would attack you and then steal your runes and leave you out. If you guys ever get a chance to play it, it was one of the more intriguing Super Nintendo games and um i still still remember it quite quite fondly but that's a bit of a tangent i didn't mean to get off on there but it does remind me of that mechanic where you get to choose um not only who your main character is but your accompanying party members and then the story will be quite different based on that uh as of today actually going on um as of this recording right now there's a pokemon direct going on i've got that link in the facebook page those are for the live stream so i'm not sure if they will then i guess the streams will still count as the same ones if you're um able to then say it's only going to go on for about 20 minutes um and they don't really they just say new pokemon information will go on so we'll have uh next week if there's anything revealed We'll talk about that, but uh, you can check out those direct links and see for yourself, all you Pokemon fanatics. Uh, There was a new English gameplay trailer and screenshots for the Luna Gear for Ark of Alchemist. This game is coming out on January 30th in the West, the, the desert set RPG. 
uh, players can use the Luna Gear to master the four different orb elements, fire, water, wind, and earth. A single element, such as fire, can be used to summon a fire projectile, while combining two elements can summon more powerful attacks. Uh, the game is being developed by Idea Factory, uh, but it doesn't look like your typical Idea Factory uh, game. You can choose from seven plus playable characters. Um, in the uh, initial Japanese release of the game, Quinn was the oval only playable character, but in this update, players cannot choose from cannot choose any member of the party to lead and wield the Luna gear. The, the update also includes new items, including new base facilities that will help make it easier to level up the party. The user interface has also improved for better gameplay quality. So it looks like they've it still doesn't look great. Uh, you're gonna, you're not going to be blown away by the screenshots or uh, <laughs> or videos. It definitely kind of looks more like a PlayStation 3 game. Um, but it does look like it could be kind of fun, and they have tried to make improvements to it, and I do respect uh, respect them for doing that. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it, but there was a third video uh, released for the open world uh, action RPG Genshin Impact, and this is the third in the series of the uh, Tevat Travel Highlight articles. Uh, this one is called A Merchant's Memory of Liu. L I Y U E. That's a lot of vowels. Um, and it's quite uh, quite long. But if you're looking forward to that game and you want to read this, uh, it's talking about the trading port of Liu. But I've got that linked for you guys. The game is coming out for. PC, PS4, and I believe there's even a mobile version coming out at some point this year. Um, got a new story trailer for Langrisser 1 and 2. Well, this is the story trailer for uh, Part 2 in particular. Um, here is the story summary from the game's official website. It has been centuries since the War of the Sacred Sword raised El Saleh. Now, incessant, incessant violence plagues the continent. Isolated battles arise across the land, ravaging towns and nations before creeping to the next. The kingdom of Baldea is but a legend, and Langrisser is no more than a fairy tale. A young traveler named Elwyn journeys to the land of Hein. An amateur mage he met on his travels. One day during their travels, they decide to stay the night in an inn in Hein's hometown, a small village known as Salrath. In the middle of the night, Hein burst into Elwyn's room, pale as the night moon behind him. He claims that forces of the Raygard Empire were seen on the outskirts of the city. They are searching for Liana, a young girl who lived there. What business could the Empire have with a village as peaceful as Salrath? And a defenseless girl, playing, paying no need to the precarious situation he was about to involve himself with, Elwyn leaves for the countryside without hesitation to save her. Here's an overview of the remake collection via NIS America. In Langrisser 1, the forces of darkness are descending upon the kingdom of Baldia. Take up your sword as Prince Linen and discover the evil that lies at the heart of the Dalsis Empire. In part two, the forces of darkness once again threaten the realm. Thrust in between warring factions, it's up to our hero Elwyn to navigate this war and determine which path will bring peace to this conflict. Langrisser 1 and 2 is returning both classic stories of good and evil, now remade in beautiful high definition visuals, reorchestrated music, and quality of life improvements to the gameplay and user experience that made these strategy RPGs truly legendary. Langrisser 1 and 2 is due out on PS4, Switch, and PC via Steam on March 17th in North America, March 20th in Europe, and March 27th in the Oceania countries. So, of course, there is that story trailer accompanying this story. Check it out, of course, on the old Facebook page. And with that, we'll just take ourselves a short little break and be right back with a few more stories and one speculative story 
You'll have to wait to the end to, to hear that one. Be right back on episode 93 of the JRPG Report. All right, everyone, welcome back. Let's talk just a little bit about uh, a game that popped up on my radar, and I hadn't really heard about it before. I may have even talked about it on the original release, but Labyrinth of Witch is coming to PC on January 30th. It's a dungeon exploration RPG. It's currently available on the Switch, iOS, and Android. But they released uh, just a little bit about what the PC version is going to go. Of course, coming out on January 30th, it will support English, Japanese, and traditional Chinese language options. The iOS and Android version came out last April, and Switch got a digital release on the eShop back in November. So here is the overview. It's a simple dungeon exploration RPG that anyone can play. Strategically use a multitude of items to tackle ever-changing dungeons. Its key features include a roguelike for anyone and everyone. The simple, easy-to-play dungeon exploration RPG is free of difficult game mechanics. Uh, built for the speedrunners, take on the speed the speedrun dungeon armed with only your wits, no starting items, and find your own gear. Well, that sounds kind of interesting. And it's pixel art at its best. State-of-the-art pixel art and animations bring your adventures to life. And let's see if there's anything. No. Uh, I found the original story for when it came out on um, for the Switch. There is an interesting video, though, in there that... Um, you can check out it's on YouTube. Just type in Labyrinth of the Witch PV and you can check out that um that video if you're interested. It's a cute looking game. Um looks like a, like I said, I like um I like games like that. I might check it on the Switch one day. I for, did not realize it was on there if it's not too much. It said it's listed um for about fifteen hundred yen, so it's not very expensive. I'll have to uh, Maybe check that out one day. Uh, in business news, uh, don't ask me what all this means, but I will read you the story <laughs> as it is presented. Nippon Itchy Software has announced the establishment of SystemSoft Beta as a new subsidiary to succeed the computer game software division of Alpha Soft of SystemSoft Alpha. It was founded on December third and is being led by. Kuichai Katazumi. Here is their explanation for the succession. Nippon Issue Software is developing business with the goal of worldwide success under the division of entertainment for all. System Soft Alpha is a company established in 1999 with many successes in the simulation game genre, such as um, the Dasanyaka series. Nippon Ichi Software is determined that taking over the computer game software division of SystemSoft Alpha can lead to the market growth and increased value in our company. So this is, overall, they are just restructuring and trying to um, be more profitable. We talked many months ago about some financial issues that we're looking at. Um, was looking Nippon Ichi square in the face. So this is just further... Um, Maybe consolidation, um, just trying to uh, do make more smart business decisions, and that's always a good thing. We talked a little while ago about the Nino Cooney movie that was being developed, and if you are a Netflix subscriber, you'll actually be able to watch this. It is making its international debut on Netflix on January 16th. It originally premiered in Japan back in August. 2019. Here's an overview. It's not very long, but here it is. Two average teens go on a magical quest to save the life of their friend and her counterpart from another world. But love complicates their story. Studio Ghibli animator Yoshiyuki Mose, I believe that's how it said, from Spirited Away, directs this enchanting film based on the renowned video game. Um, just from the images, you can't see any direct um, connection to the games. So I will check this out for you guys. See, I'm just doing the the hard work 
of playing games and and now watching animated films just for you guys. I mean, that's that's why I do all this. So I'll check this out on uh, maybe next weekend and get uh, get a moment and see if there's any ties directly to the game, how it looks and feels. I mean, it's got the Ghibli connection to it, at least with this one, so it could be pretty cool. We'll let you guys know. There was a interesting uh, article that came out I shared the other day. And it is, according to the DigiTimes report, saying that Nintendo will release a new model of Switch hardware in mid-2020, citing, quote, sources from the related upstream supply chain, unquote. It will reportedly begin volume production at the end of Q1 2020, so that be the end of March. We may have some more uh, solid information Coming out, according to the report, the new model will have a better CPU and magnesium alloy body instead of plastic. That's pretty cool. It is worth noting that Digitimes has a mixed track record regarding Nintendo. For example, in June 2016, it reported that the Switch, known by its codename NX at the time, was delayed from a planned mid-2016 release window to early 2017 to add virtual reality functions. I not aware of those functions. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, it does not sound like this is a new system. Um, it just sounds like, uh, so we, we had the, the new Switch version, you know, Switch Lite, was that what they called it? Um, this just sounds like a enhanced version i don't know if it's necessarily like a ps4 and ps4 pro type of deal or it's a significant upgrade or just um a new better uh you know new system that they are replacement switch model that will just be the the norm going forward that's where it kind of sounds like we're headed um and switch is definitely um I would say it's getting near the end of its lifespan, but Nintendo doesn't always play by the rules necessarily, and if they continue to have quality software come out for it, I can definitely see them um, holding off on a new hardware uh, for a little while longer. So as soon as I hear anything more definite, I'll get back to you guys about that. Earthbound fans... I'm sure there's more than a few of you guys out there. And no, I don't have Mother 3 news because that's just never going to happen. I've given up on that. But there is a fan game out there that was called Mother 4 and has now been renamed Oddity, its development team said. And it will launch for PC, Mac, and Linux, quote, when it's ready, (laughs) unquote. Uh, They probably got some heat over using uh, Mother 4's name. Uh, there is a trailer that goes along with this one, and it kind of looks like if you made Earthbound in today's times, but still wanted it to retain that look to it, this is this is it. So here is the about from the Mother 4 fan website. Odyssey is a surreal urban fantasy role-playing game set in the 70s. Play as Travis Fields, an ordinary boy who leaves home in a bid to save the world. Travis takes on to the field armed with a baseball bat and a pellet gun, along with powers he's only now discovering. It might have something to do with that, quote, gate, unquote, thing that blew up on an impromptu camping trip. Whatever the case, the world's in danger. People are crabby. Demons rung a monk, the moon's covered in a creepy ooze, a bear did something, and to top it all off, there's even a society called the Modern Men popping up lately. They might be behind all the recent kidnappings, but don't worry. You'll make plenty of friends as you fight your way through this weird and groovy world. If you're looking for a surreal quest full of oddball characters and serious challenge with a lot of heart and honesty, is for you. And here are the four characters 
uh, that they've listed so far. Travis, age 13, his hometown is Bellring. His favorite thing is daydreams. He's got his head in the clouds, and maybe that's why it's so easy for him to accept his tele- telepathy and healing powers. But Travis is still just an ordinary kid who loves baseball. There's Meryl. She's also 14. She's from Citrus Hills. Her favorite thing is pond skaters. Chipper and gentle at heart, Meryl's future sight and extreme psychic attacks make her confident that she can take anything that's thrown at her, but also makes her a bit reckless. Just bear with it. She means well. There's Floyd, age 14, hometown Pennyburg. His favorite thing are race cars. Quick-witted and street smart, this blue-collar schoolboy doesn't seem to need psychic powers to be an asset. Floyd's charm and confidence makes him dependable, even if he's a bit slow to adapt. And then there's Leo. His age is listed as Buzz Off. <laughs> His hometown is, what are you, a cop? <laughs> His favorite thing <laughs> is dishwashers. Dangerous, quiet, wild. The leader of a motorcycle gang is probably wanted all over the world. It's no wonder, on top of swinging around everything from center blocks to stop signs, Leo's a potential psychic. So, I am very much looking forward to this game. Earthbound is easily one of my favorite JRPGs of the Super Nintendo era, and it has a definite place in my... I'll say top 20. Um, I would say top 10, but it's probably around that 11 or 12 range. So just outside of it. And like I said, I've given up on ever playing mother three. So this may be the best chance at playing (laughs) some sort of earthbound game, um, at any point in time in my lifetime. So if you guys are interested, check out the link I got on the Facebook page with a really cool trailer to go along with it. It has it has everything right, guys. It it just looks like they're doing an amazing job with it, and I can't wait to see it at some point in time. I have not been able to verify this last piece of news, so I'm just going to take it as it is, okay? Um, well, actually just something just popped up. Okay. So this was the first bit of news that's popped up from the Pokemon direct. Maybe it might be the only one. Um, there is a Pokemon mystery dungeon rescue team DX has been announced for the switch. Uh, there is a March 6th demo coming out here soon. So here's the release. The Pokemon company, Nintendo and developer Spike Chunsoft have announced Pokemon mystery dungeon Rescue Team DX for the Switch. It will okay. It will launch on March the sixth. The demo is available right now, and will let you carry your progress full to carry your progress to the full game. Here is the overview via Nintendo. Here's the about. What if you were to wake up one morning and you were a Pokemon? You can meet and recruit Pokemon in this dungeon crawling adventure within their world. Build a rescue team to take on the mysterious changing dungeons and strategically plan your moves as you venture forth to make the Pokemon world a safer place and uncover your true purpose along the way. As you recruit Pokemon, these trusty teammates will need somewhere to stay, so you build camp build camps to house, manage, and strengthen your friends. Think hard about who is right for the job and how to approach each mysterious dungeon as you prepare a rescue team. You'll move a single square at a time or use auto mode to speed up movement until you engage other Pokemon in turn-based battles. But don't forget about Pokemon strengths and weaknesses. This version adds gorgeous watercolor inspired graphics and more. Get comfortable in being a Pokemon. There's a lot of work to do. Key features include you'll wake up in the world of Pokemon and cover your true purpose. Dungeon layouts will change each time you enter them, so you'll likely not have the same adventure twice. Build a rescue team to explore dungeons and engage in strategic turn-based combat. Pokemon are available to meet and recruit. And the gorgeous watercolor-inspired graphics, there is a launch trailer or announcement trailer as well. And it uh, it does look pretty cool. I like the, um, the art style of this. It really uh, is quite unique. So I'll go ahead and share that. Like I said, that literally just... Uh, popped up as I was recording. It wasn't there when I started, but it's there now. 
Okay, so on to the last thing I was about to talk about before that. And that's why I checked back my, uh, I refreshed the page just to make sure nothing has popped up about that. Speaking of demos, the Final Fantasy VII remake demo. Like I said, I still have not seen any concrete announcement about this. However, there has been some speculations on Twitter. Um, yes, I have I have decided to dive into the world <laughs> of Twitter. And so there's some people talking about um, the demo and its release date. And everything, a couple of people that I've seen, a couple, uh, we'll, we'll just call them sources, <laughs> are pointing at a day of release for the demo rather than getting it early. My first initial reaction to this was, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? And then I got to thinking about it and I was like, well, actually, that's not that unusual. Um, Typically, your demos do come out beforehand in order to build excitement, in order to get you ready for the game. Well, does this release need that? Uh, probably not. And I, how many guys have how many times have you guys seen a game is already out, and then they release a demo for it down the line? Although we just had that story about Kingdom Hearts three not long ago, that it was finally getting a demo right, and that's been out since January. And then I did a little more thinking about it. And so there was the screenshot that I had from last week for the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo. And then you're kind of like, well, why why is this all coming out? Um, all this information and, you know, listings on the store if it's not coming out soon. Well, so I look at the screenshot and I completely read this to you guys last week, and it didn't make any sense, but now it kind of does with this information, if this is true. On that screenshot, it has, if you press options, you can purchase it. Well, it doesn't say pre-purchase. You know, it says purchase. And so if you really think about that, you couldn't purchase a game from the demo unless it was out. Which means maybe this is true that it is not going to come out until March 3rd when the game releases. Now, information can come out in, you know, in five minutes that will reboot all this or confirm this. But I just I've I saw this information this morning and I wanted to pass it along to you guys. What do you think about that? Um you can make a comment on the Facebook page or on the Twitter feed. What's your what's your reaction to this? Does it make sense? Is it Kind of silly. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it completely, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, I would love to play this game before it comes out, but if it doesn't, then I'm more than happy to wait until the third to play the entire thing. Like I said, I didn't, um, I did not view all the footage from the demo. I want that to be fresh, but yeah. So let's see what you guys think about that that's about all i have this week for you guys i hope you have enjoyed it i of course enjoy bringing it to you each and every week um like i said it was kind of short this week and that's that is okay don't forget give us a like on facebook follow us there follow us on twitter give us a subscribe over on youtube i try to have my nightly streams on that from cold steel 3 right now as well as making some some fun videos here and there, as well as each week you can listen to the podcast on YouTube with accompanying videos and images as well. That'll do it for episode 93. Thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, guys, get back out there and level up.